Today we're going to go through the process of building a test in the Huntron Workstation software, editing the information into the tree pane within the software. Before we start, we'll go ahead and check a few of the options in the software, one being the hardware connected to the PC. We have a, tracker, a Huntron Tracker Model 30 to connected to the USB port, and also an Access Prober connected to COM4 using a uh, Sensoray 2250 frame grabber. Now you can connect or disconnect the hardware with these buttons. You can see when they say disconnect it means everything's connected up. We also do want to check the default ranges we have set up. These are the ranges that are inserted when we add a new component to the database. We have three ranges enabled, each one being a tracker type of range. Switch to the tracker tab and you can see the three range uh, the three ranges that are set up. The parameters for the first one are the 3 volts, 50 ohms at 60 hertz. Second one's 3 volts, 2k ohms at 200 hertz. And the last is 3 volts, 20k ohms at 400 hertz. These are pretty good general purpose ranges to uh, start with when building our test. We'll go ahead and save permanent these settings. That way whenever the software started up, these are the parameters that we'll use. So with that done, We'll go ahead and add a new board to the database. You can either go to the file menu and select new or as I prefer to use the toolbar buttons. I'll just use the add new board button in the toolbar. Give the board a name. We'll just call it test board. You can also insert a revision um, if you wish. Um, also system and unit information. Um, you can also include manufacturer and gold disk numbers for the U.S. Navy. You also have the ability to name the size of the board. In this case, the defaults are top and bottom, but it could just as well be component and solder. We'll also select the units of measure if you're using a Huntron robotic prober. We'll go with the default of mils, or thousandths of an inch. All these edit windows have space for adding additional instructions. We'll just go ahead and type in some basic board instructions. Click OK to save this. The default save position is in the My Documents Huntron Boards folder. So we'll click OK, replace the one that was already existing, and uh, that part's complete. So now at the top of the workstation window, you'll see the path to the current database that's selected. Next step is to add sequences to our database. So you can either use the edit menu to add a new sequence or you can just use the toolbar button. The add new button is the blue plus button. You can give your sequence a name. We'll just call it test sequence. If you're using a robotic prober, um, you would need to select which slot the board will be mounted into. We'll go ahead and select middle slot. And again down at the bottom we have space for instructions to relate to the user using the test. There's also additional settings and checkboxes enables and everything else in this window. Uh, we'll just go with the defaults for now. That's uh, to be covered in, in a later topic. Click OK to save the sequence. And now you see we have a sequence added to the tree. The next step is to go ahead and add components or test points to our sequence. So by selecting the components tab and using the add new button you can open up a new component dialog. Again, we'll give it a name. Let's call it U1. A package type. The package type relates to the pin outline of the device. In this case, our device is a dual inline package or DIP package. And also, you want to specify the number of pins on the device. You can also select the type of interface to the device, whether you're using hand probes, a scanner such as a 2000S, or a robotic prober. We'll go ahead and select Prober. Again, more instruction space if you need to use that. Let's we'll type in again some basic instructions. And you also have the ability to add some additional information to the component, such as part package, uh, part numbers, replacement supplier information. You can all add that to the database. Go ahead and click OK. We'll save that component to the database. You can see it right there. Now we could just use the plus button to add a new component, but what we'll do in this case is to use the build function by right-clicking on the row header right here 
to create open a menu and select build. Now what build does is it takes a the information from U1 and creates another component called U2. Essentially increments the name by one number. It's a duplicate of U1. Quick way to create a duplicate. Or it could also use the repeat function which does the same thing but it creates a new, new copy of the component and leaves the name blank. So now you can just go ahead and type in the component name that you wish to have. One nice thing about this grid layout is that you can actually type right into the text fields within the grid without having to open up an edit window. So in this case we'll select the type field for U5 and just go ahead and type in a part number for that particular device. So there you have it. This is uh, the whole process for creating a basic tree within the Huntron Workstation software.